Hey you guys, welcome back to The Gentle Life. Um, I am in the bathroom currently and I'm whispering because everybody is here at the house. Well, you know, <laughs> Chris, the twins and Mika, and I don't want anyone to hear me, but okay, so clearly um, you guys can tell by the title of this video. I never, I never wanted children. I grew up not liking children very much and that could be an everybody thing that people just don't like other people's kids and you know they don't really know until they have their own children and um i just i never thought that i would have kids i got pregnant very young with the twins and shortly after having the twins um if you guys remember the story that I shared back a few months ago, how Mackenzie was shaken by her biological father. Quickly, at three months, I became a single mom with twins, first time. And up until they were three, I still really couldn't figure it out. I didn't know why my emotions were were everywhere. I didn't understand why I still couldn't really get it together. I knew that I really loved them. And so I worked, I worked and I worked nonstop. A part of me when it happened to Mackenzie, part of me just wanted to give up then and pretty much just give all my responsibility away because I just, at the time, hindsight looking back at the time, I didn't know that what I was going through was postpartum depression. And I know this video is kind of going to be all over the place, but I need to say this to get to the point of it. Um, so please follow along or skip it. I don't know. I knew that I couldn't take care of them. And I started looking around for adoption agencies. I started looking around just, you know, different, you know, different options that I had because I still, even when they were three years old, three years later, I still couldn't figure it out. And not to say that I couldn't figure out like how to take care of them, you guys. I was, I had a really amazing job. I loved my job. I was bringing home more than enough money. I had my own place. The kids had their own room. And by all means, like I was doing what, what I should be doing you know, as a parent. And honestly, like, I felt like it wasn't enough. I felt like I wasn't giving them what I should have been giving them. And I think at the time, I just thought that I needed to give them a happy home because I didn't grow up in one. And what I mean by like a happy home is a two parent household. And I strongly, like longed for that, for them. And I was so upset at myself because I couldn't give them that. And, and so I started looking up adoption agencies. And it wasn't until I met Chris that I realized that I could do this. It wasn't until I met him that I realized that we, I didn't have to have the traditional family that it didn't need to be with their dad and that I had a chance because in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, well, the moment their dad couldn't be there and their dad wasn't the man that I thought that he would be, I just figured, you know, who is going to want me? And that was very selfish. And again, I was very young when I had them. And I think a part of me just felt like I couldn't love them because I felt like I didn't have someone to love me. I'm glad I don't feel that way now. I'm glad that I have a different perspective on motherhood, on life, on my past. And Chris helped me do that. He helped me get a hold of it, <laughs> you know, pretty much take control of that. And I thought like, you know, I had it all figured out. Like I had it all, you know, one and done. Oh, I had twins first round boy and girl, like who would want more kids? We want more kids, but um, I really embraced being a mom at that point. 
I really found the connection of what motherhood was. And so I said, say, I said that to say that everything happens for a reason. And when Chris went to the military, we had decided, you know, because he was going infantry and, and we had decided, you know, we would have hated for something to happen and we didn't start our own legacy and continue on with our family um, as mixed as it is and was at the time that everything fell into place once we decided. He was gone for 74 days in basic training. And this is before AIT. He was gone 74 days. We didn't talk on the phone. We wrote letters every week, back and forth. And you could say love letters. Um, we wrote love letters every week. And I wrote a letter to him and I'd said that I wanted to, I wanted to have a baby. And I said, you know, this would be the last time, you know, and I just, if you're, if you want to, like, I would really love to have a baby with you. I'd really love to continue our, our family, our legacy. And remember that I hadn't gotten a letter from him the next week. And I thought maybe that like scared him or, you know, or he just didn't want it. And so I quickly wrote him another letter and I said, oh, you know, pretty much like, it's okay, you know, we don't have to and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And in the midst of me sending that letter, I received a letter from him <laughs> and he was just like, yeah, let's do it. And it's just so crazy because the day that he had basic, his um, graduation was the day that I was ovulating. And before that, I wasn't tracking any of that stuff. I wasn't thinking of any of that stuff. I just thought like, I wanted to be as healthy as I can be. And so I went on this diehard cleanse and, um, <laughs> and I, you know, whatever, was just thinking, how can I be healthy? And I started this campaign with the other military groups all over the world and well, all over America, <laughs> the nation. And, um, and uh, it was I Run With Precious. And I know some of you guys are following me from I Run With Precious and a lot of you guys have no idea what it was. But I had started this group um, when my husband first went off and I had said that, you know, I wanted to run two miles every day until he's home. And so it was the campaign was I Run With Precious and then it was every day until my husband is home. And so I went to the park and I, I did two miles every single day, every single day in the rain. I I did two miles and my, my time got better and, you know, I felt better. And the day of his graduation, we went, me and his, um, his mom and stepdad at the time and, um, sisters. And we went to the graduation. We had to drive all the way down to Georgia. And so Miko can see one and done. It just happened. And I just didn't, I just knew then that it was meant to be. Hence, that's where Miko is the mirage. It was this whole thing <laughs> um, because I just never thought that I would have another kid after the twins, and it it surprised me. So, um, after that, a year later, after we had Miko, I had weight loss surgery, and I I did that because I didn't want to have any more kids after that, and I just said, you know, we are like this is our family like this is what it is but over time of becoming this different type of mom and i think that every every mom is a different mom each pregnancy like each period you're a different person you're a, you you shed another level of you know shed another layer of skin and so it made me realize a lot of things in life that i hadn't really thought of and and so we tried again and we tried last month um in june and we went down to myrtle beach and, and you know we're like oh we can do it again like it was like one and done i'm like tracking ovulation and it's all going good and then 
a big fat negative. And I'm like, that's weird. I was diagnosed with PCOS. And so I just thought like, okay, well then, if this was like a negative, then it's no way possible that we're going to be able to, it's, it's going to take us a while or it's just not meant to be. It's just not meant to be. And so I was like so discouraged. I was so, you know, kind of heartbroken that it didn't happen. And so when we came back, we were just like, you know what, we don't need to. It's, it's like, okay. And I'm like, kind of brushing off. And as days got closer, I'm just like, man, I just want to try again. Like, I just, I just want to see, like, maybe, you know, before I didn't go back like, on this cleanse, like I did the first time. And then I'm like, well, my first pregnancy, I didn't even know that I was pregnant with the twins until it was six weeks pregnant. And it's just all this just running through my brain. And so I did a, another pretty much like heavy detox and not really like of like the same type of detox that I did with Iron with Precious, but just um, stress wise, you know, no alcohol, no, you know, not celebrating the 4th of July, none of all that stuff, you know, the weekends and the summer and my birthday. And, and I'm just like, oh my God, maybe it's because I just turned 30 and oh my God, like my chances are done. And so I, I looked up and I did my calculations and I, you know, got on this app and I'm like, if we conceive this time, when would we have this baby? When would this due date be? Because if we got pregnant in June, the due date would be in February. And um, and the due date fell for this month, if we are pregnant now, it fell on March 17th. And you guys have no idea what that day means at all it could be someone's birthday it could be I mean any a number of things it's March 17th and um and I'm going to show you the show you this first today's July 4th 2023 first one I took this morning And then that one I just took. And I've got all my crying outs. So I'm not going to cry on this video. But March 17th is the date that Chris lost his brother. March 17th, 2016. Which is how me and Chris met. I'd seen that he lost his brother. I reached out to him and... I have no idea why I did because I didn't know who he was. I didn't know who his brother was. I had no idea. <laughs> and I would never, I never do that. Like I see people that I don't know on, you know, my friends, you know, they maybe lost someone and I don't, I don't necessarily like personally reach out to them. And, you know, I, I give my condolences and I, you know, um, you know, I'm here if you guys need me or anything like that. But something about this, like really like said, say something. And this is somebody that I didn't know. And so I did. And his brother was still on life support at the time. And, you know, and I was just saying, like, you know, stay strong. And, you know, I, you know, I hope he pulls through. And, and you know, and, and, and then he did it. And, um... I've contemplated on doing this video, trying to make this a happy moment, and and it is a very happy moment. And so the only thing that I can think of is that the reason why I didn't get pregnant last month is because I was supposed to get pregnant this month. And I think that that was a sign, and that is a sign. I can't wait to tell him. I don't know how he's going to react. But I just personally, I know he's not watching this video, but I personally want to thank his brother. I want to thank you, Cliff, for sharing this date with us because this means more to him than you 
or anyone could possibly understand how much you've meant to him. And, and I know that babies don't always come on the due date, you guys, like I was, <laughs> I'm aware of that. I know that that's not, you know, but I have a strong feeling that this will. And so, um, thank you. Until next time, you guys. Thank you for watching.